so you know. You're like, who are these people? I don't know. <laughs> but the narrator is 30. Um, she's queer. She just um, went to Florida. She's staying with her mother in Florida, and there's just a giant hurricane. And um, she's kind of, of, a, of a mess. And she's um, kind of fucking the boy who lives behind and her mom, who's like 24 and just signed up for the army. And he has a 17-year-old sister, Aunt. he's Aiden. Angela's a 17-year-old sister, she's pregnant, she doesn't know. Like the father's one of these two guys, Hank and Marcus, they're all going to karaoke. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and there's just a giant hurricane. Holy <laughs> God damn, Angela said, her snout pressed up against the glass, her eyes picking up shapes in the dark. There's a boat, she narrated. There's a couch, there's a fridge or something, a stove. Her hands with their chipped and bitten nails were folded under her belly, cradling the thought of it. How long do you think it'll take to get, to get normal here? Not that it was ever normal, but you know. She gave me a look like we were in on knowing that this place wasn't normal. The two of us together in a vehicle of boys who thought this road was the whole world, more or less. Behind us, Hank and Marcus tossed their empties to shatter into the street, and the dogs howled. The karaoke place was not a bar like the ones back in San Francisco, the gay one in the Castro where giant men sang the rose in falsetto, or the one in the Tenderloin where hipsters crooned country songs in Pat Benatar. It was a small house on the side of the road, sitting squat in a hazy halo of its own light. The only working street lamp in miles shone down on a patch of parking lot, and still more bright in the front porch. An illuminated sign stuck with plastic letters beamed, still open, sing your blues away free for hurricane victims. Oh, yeah, Angela squealed. She popped the door open and swung out from the truck before Aiden killed the engine. Her hand walked to the hood. You should join the army more often, she chirped. We never do anything this fun around here. <laughs> <laughs> Hank and Marcus's wallet chains clanked on the trunk as they clambered off, the, the dog's collars jangling as they tied their rope leashes down. Surrounding the small house, I could spot the foundations of the businesses the hurricane had lifted away. Chunky cement piles and the jagged peaks of split beams. The karaoke hut sat pristine in the middle of it all, as if it had blown over from another town, was dropped on the side of Route 12 like Dorothy's house onto a witch. Only a bit of blue tarp caught the light and revealed that it had been in the storm at all. It's like the witch's house in Hansel and Gretel, I told Aiden, just sitting here in the middle of nowhere. It's not nowhere, it's Route 12, Aiden said. Route 12's always been here, and this karaoke place has always been on Route 12. And just because you've never been to either place didn't mean it didn't exist before you showed up. <laughs> Aiden slammed himself out of the car and joined his people on the front porch, walking in long, shit-kicking strides. His ba baseball hat was shoved brim first into his back pocket. Hank and Marcus both wore theirs. I sat in the cab and watched them smoking and smacking at each other, the tongues of their work boots sticking up over the cuffs of their jeans, holes in the flannel tossed over their t-shirts. I knew a dozen queer girls back home who tried to look like them, and Hank and Marcus would at the very least joke about kicking their ass. This was the last time I'd ever have to hang out with any of them. Perhaps Angela would wander through the backyard to smoke cigarettes and talk, but I wouldn't be able to keep smoking with her and her baby getting bigger there inside her stomach. <laughs> Hank and Marcus were Aiden's friends, not mine. Possibly Aiden wasn't even my friend. Just someone I got stuck with while at my mom's in Florida, because what else do you do while at your mom's in Florida than forget your gay and fuck a hick? <laughs> I should just accept it, that I was a snob, that I would never see this place as the real world, a reasonable place to live, but as a subterrain of disaster and stunted options and kitsch. The armored muscle of an alligator, and the seashell sculpture of that same alligator leaning against a seashell palm and smoking a seashell cigar. <laughs> the upturned corpse of an alligator in the middle of the road, its scaled belly torn open and looted by vultures. I would ever see Aiden as some weird other, first a boy in a Dunkin' Donuts uniform, dropping steel turds of munchkins into a box soon as a boy in a sandy camouflage, tearing his own self away in order to merge with something larger, the way a storm wrenches a roof from its house. And into the hole will come rain and mud and destruction. The dude who ran the karaoke place seemed mad with near-death and generator fumes. The cluster of gas-chugging machines sputtered and hummed behind the building, keeping the place aglow and powering the, ma the machines playing synthesized approximations of the hits of the ages. I could hear the electronic tinkle of blue velvet faint behind the generator's roar. As promised on the news, the karaoke rooms were free, coolers of melted ice bogged with free plastic bottles of water. We're drinking beer tonight because my brother is joining the service tomorrow, Angela told the proprietor, whose face wrinkled and shook at her words. No alcohol, I'm sorry. Drink the water, please, as much as you want. He moved his arms at us in a weird hula, like he was pushing waves of clean water toward us. He was a Japanese man whose hair gleamed with a grimy coat of grease, sweat from the heat and sweat sprung from panic, the dirty fog from the generator and the dull, wet air that held it. 
I wondered what situation had brought him to this random place in Florida, and if his life was better for being here. Our boy's going in the army, Hank said, clapping his paw heavy on Aiden's back. Tonight's his last night, man. You gotta let us celebrate. This could be his last week alive, bro. Marcus snorted into his sleeve, and Aiden shook the hand from his back, murmuring, dude. Angela spun and whacked Hank, the bottom of her beer bottle clipping his jaw. Why would you say that, you sick fucker? Don't ever say that. Take that back. No, no. The proprietor waved his hands in front of us, breaking up the energy. We're all alive here. We all celebrate. Do what you like. That's okay. Take some water for later. You all have houses? Yes, sir, Angela said. She held her beer bottle behind her back demurely and bowed a bit. Hank rubbed his jaw. You have generators, TV, roofs on your houses, he continued, and we nodded. More or less. You can see all my neighbors are gone. All my neighbors, boom. His hands clapped together and flew into the air like his neighbors, his flicking fingers, beams, and pipes, and tiles, and brick. I have to wonder, why not me? This is a personal pet peeve of mine. People trying to read personal significance into big-ass random events like hurricanes. Why would something like a hurricane have anything to do with any of us? A giant impersonal muscle of wet wind. I'll have to keep thinking about it, the guy nodded. Maybe it's so people can sing. Singing helps people. He nodded. I was reluctantly a teeny bit touched that he thought getting tanked and croaking out you shook me all night long would help anyone hear from their house being smashed to shit, but what did I know? I wasn't even an expert on my own life anymore. The generators continued to exude their stink, and we waited to be shown the karaoke chamber. Behind me, Hank and Marcus coughed bits of laughter at the sentimental guy into their cups. Let's go, dude! Angela's beer hand swung back out and into the air. She could only act demure for so long.